In this video, I'll introduce disjunction introduction. Disjunction introduction says that you can reason from a formula P in the language of propositional logic to a disjunction P or Q or PVQ or to Q or P at a new line in the proof. In other words, let's say you had a formula P. You could, using disjunction introduction, reason to a new line in the proof, let's say P or R. The thing to notice is that the disjunction that we're reasoning to contains P as one of its disjuncts. So we're reasoning from P to a disjunction. Since P and Q are just placeholders or variables for any formula in the language of propositional logic, we can use disjunction introduction to reason to more complicated formulas. So let's say you had a formula like P and S. You could use disjunction introduction to reason to P and S, or let's say not Q. Here again, we're reasoning from a formula to a disjunction, and one of the disjuncts of the resulting disjunction is the formula that we started with or reasoned from. Sometimes it's not immediately obvious why we, we would accept disjunction introduction as a part of the derivation rules for propositional logic. But this worry can be alleviated if we look at the truth table analysis for an argument for disjunction introduction. If we take a look at the argument where P is the premise and the conclusion here is a disjunction, so here we're reasoning from a premise P to a disjunction P or Q where P is found in the resulting disjunction, we can see that whenever P is true, that is whenever the premises are true here, it is not the case that there is an interpretation such that P or Q is false. So provided we know that P is the case, uh, it won't be ever be the case that if P is the case, then P or Q is false. And one thing that we'll note is one of the reasons is, is because provided P is the case, then it is automatically going to make the disjunction P or Q the case. One of the things worth pointing out with respect to disjunction introduction is that when we apply it to everyday arguments, we are reasoning from a proposition to an or proposition, a complex statement that is linked together with or, but that or needs to be understood inclusively. So if we understand P or Q inclusively, where we say, oh, you can have ice cream or cake or both, then or statements are true just in the case where either one of the formulas that's being connected are the case. So P is the case, Q is the case, as well as when it is the case that both of the propositions are the case. So if it's true that you can have ice cream and cake, uh, which corresponds to line one right here where you see P is true, Q is true, then the entire formula is true. And so you'll notice that disjunction introduction, the use that's reformulated here says that if P is the case, um, then we can reason to P or Q, and we're not moving from truth to falsity. But when we understand or exclusively, that is someone reasons from a statement P to P or Q, and this or right here is understood in English in the exclusive sense, what is being asserted here is not simply the disjunction P or Q, but instead something like P or Q in the inclusive sense and not both. So not both, not P and Q. So you can think of an example where, well, let's say we're talking about, let's say the greatest movie. And just to kind of pick random things, let's say A is the greatest movie. So A is the greatest. Or let's say someone says uh, B is the greatest. B is the greatest. Now, when we talk about the greatest of something, usually we understand the greatness to be exclusive, that only one thing can be the, be the best or the greatest. So when we say something like A is the greatest or B is the greatest, we understand this or exclusively. 
Another example would be, let's to use a sort of, you can have cake or ice cream, but it's somehow implied that you can't have both. Let's say I'm talking to my daughter or a child or something like that. We want to limit the amount of sweets. So you can have ice cream um, or you can have cake. And I say you can have one or the other, but, but not both. So here this or is understood exclusively in that you can have this one or you can have this one, but it's not the case that you can have both of them. And then up here we have this sort of translation of P or Q understood inclusively. And then in order to add this exclusivity, we say and not both. So and, which is this wedge right here, and not both P and Q. So when we look at the argument in terms of a truth table analysis, we see that when P is true and both P and Q are true, then the resulting formula that we're reasoning to is false. In other words, what this suggests is that reasoning from statements like P uh, to, let's say, therefore, P or Q, where or is understood exclusively, is not a valid or proper way of reasoning. One of the reasons is, is because if even if P is the case, even we, let's say we say P is true, if Q is also true here, if we can just tack on an or Q, like disjunction introduction says that we can, and Q is the case, then the result is it makes the entire statement false. There are of course simple examples where let's say we are reasoning from Q to let's say Q or not R. Here we simply set up the proof writing the formula to the left of the syntactic Stern style. We just kind of stack that and label it as line one and indicate it as a premise. Next, we want to try to reason to Q or not R, and we can do that using disjunction introduction. That is, disjunction introduction says that we can reason from a formula to a disjunction, provided the resulting disjunction that we're reasoning to has the formula that we're reasoning from as one of its disjuncts. So we can reason from Q to Q or not R using line one disjunction introduction. Let's look at a slightly more complicated example. How about reasoning from not R to something like not R or M or Z. Here again, we set up the proof by simply writing down the premises or the propositions that were given. And now we kind of proceed to trying to derive this formula right here, or kind of goal formula. Well, one way we can do this is by saying, look, I already have R, not R right here. And one of the formulas I would like to form in this larger formula is not R or M. And we can do that with line one. We can simply write not R or M using disjunction introduction. We can do this because we're reasoning from a formula R to a disjunction not R or M, and the disjunction, the resulting disjunction, contains not R as one of the disjuncts. But if we look at line two, all it is is a formula. All it is is just a simple old P, but just a little bit more complex. And since it's a formula, we can reason from it, so we can reason from not R or M, to the formula not R or M or Z. Here again, we're reasoning from a formula to a disjunction, and the formula that we're reasoning from is found as one of the disjuncts in the resulting disjunction. So this is by line two, disjunction introduction.